For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. We are here today to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis. You have to be curious to uh, what they raided his house about. You know, Keefe D was doing a lot of speaking. You know that old saying, how lies can keep spinning for ages, but eventually the truth kicks down the door? Well, guess what? Today might just be the long-awaited day. Fresh reports just spilled the tea that they've nabbed Tupac's killer. And hold on to your hats, because it looks like the heat might be closing in on Diddy, too. Do you feel like Puffy owe you? Yeah, he should. I think he should look out. He look out for everybody. You know what I'm saying? All them gnats, you know, they, they can't really touch me. Y'all, at the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the track record. So what exactly is going on? The murder of the iconic rapper Tupac Shakur has been a chilling unsolved mystery that has haunted the music industry and fans for over two decades. However, recent developments suggest that the long elusive truth might finally be emerging from the shadows. In a twist of fate that could only happen in the world of sensational scandals, Las Vegas detectives slapped the cuffs on none other than Dwayne Keith D. Davis, a 60-year-old gang leader with a penchant for trouble. His arrest has sent shockwaves through the industry and given a glimmer of hope to those who have longed for justice in Tupac's murder case. Mo Premi Shakur, Tupac's stepbrother, couldn't help but express mixed emotions about the arrest. He called it bittersweet, raising an eyebrow as he revealed that they had been well aware of Keith D's involvement for years. The million-dollar question remains, why did it take authorities so long to nab a suspect who had been brazenly spilling the beans about his role in the crime? Homicide Lieutenant Jason Johansson didn't mince words during a riveting press conference following Keith D's arrest. He labeled Davis as the leader and shot caller, leaving the room buzzing with questions. Interestingly, many of the facts surrounding the case were already in the hands of law enforcement during the early stages of the investigation. But the case took an unexpected turn when Keith D started making admissions to his involvement in 2018. Sheriff Kevin McMahill chimed in, making it crystal clear that this case was far from over. He assured the public that they were actively building a successful prosecution. It's safe to say that Nevada's grand jury was convinced, as they indicted Davis for the murder after several months of intense deliberation. His arrest came as a surprise while he was casually taking a stroll near his home. What sets Keith D apart from the run-of-the-mill suspects in this case is his astonishing willingness to spill the tea publicly. He openly admitted to being at the scene of the drive-by shooting that claimed Tupac's life in 1996. He didn't stop there, he even confessed to passing the murder weapon to another gang member, making it all too clear that there were skeletons lurking in the hip-hop world's closet. But wait, there's more. In a shocking 2019 tell-all memoir titled Compton Street Legend, Keith D spilled the beans on his involvement. He claimed to have been cruising in the very same Cadillac that was involved in the shooting. In this explosive literary piece, he let the cat out of the bag, stating that he had actually informed authorities about his participation in the back in 2010 during a super secret meeting with federal and local law enforcement. However, Davis alleged that the authorities had promised him immunity in exchange for his cooperation, raising eyebrows about the handling of the case. And it doesn't end there. In the riveting documentary, Who C Tupac, released in 2018, Keith D dropped the mother of all bombs. He boldly stated that he was riding shotgun in the car with his nephew, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, on the night of the murder. He went even further, confessing to handing Anderson the murder weapon moments before the fatal shots were unleashed. Tupac Shakur was a mere 25 years old when he was struck down by four bullets to the chest on that fateful night of September 7, 1996, in Las Vegas. His untimely demise left the world in shock, and now Keith D's audacity to openly discuss his role in the crime is causing seismic waves in the music industry, especially considering the high-profile nature of the case. In a move that smacks of a Hollywood thriller, Las Vegas police swooped down on the Henderson, Nevada residence of none other than Keith D's wife, Paula Clemens, this past July. This operation was all part of the ongoing investigation into Tupac's murder, with authorities hoping to strike gold by uncovering evidence that could tie Davis to the crime. During the search, 
the police struck pay dirt. They recovered a stash of .40 caliber bullets from the property, crucial pieces of evidence that will undergo forensic scrutiny to determine if they are in any way connected to Tupac Shakur's tragic death. The authorities' decision to raid Keith D's wife's home speaks volumes about the intensity of their pursuit in this case. It sends a clear signal that law enforcement is closing in on Davis, who has previously claimed that Sean Diddy Combs had distanced himself from him years ago. These developments suggest that Keith D's revelations may have far-reaching repercussions that extend beyond his own involvement in the crime. But here comes the most crucial of this tantalizing tale, the potential connection between Sean Diddy Combs and Tupac Shakur. Shakur's murder. Diddy, the music mogul himself, has managed to dance on the edge of legal repercussions for his alleged involvement in the crime, but recent twists in the story are dragging him back into the blazing spotlight. Scores of individuals, from ordinary bystanders to A-list celebrities, have woven a web connecting Tupac's murder to Diddy in one way or another. Everybody already having the, the you know, the in the back of their mind, like, that you had something to do with it, like, you're basically evident. The theories swirling around Diddy's involvement gain traction when you peer into the murky motives and shadowy intentions lurking beneath the surface. Detective Greg Codding, a former member of the Los Angeles Police Department who is knee-deep in the Tupac Shakur murder investigation, shines a light on the labyrinthine complexity of Diddy's alleged involvement. Cading suggests that Diddy's motive may have been to shield himself from the wrath of Suge Knight, who was actively seeking vengeance for the 1995 death of a friend in Atlanta, a tragedy for which he held Diddy responsible. After Tupac's tragic demise, Suge Knight allegedly dug deep into his pockets and coughed up a cool $13,000 to hire his own hitman, a Bloods member named Wardell Pucci Faust, to snuff out Christopher Wallace, also known as Biggie Smalls, a celebrated artist and a close friend of Diddy's. This was a retaliatory move that sent shockwaves through the hip-hop world. But the real kicker is this, how did Diddy get wind of Suji Knight's vengeful intentions? It's as if he had a crystal ball predicting the danger that was headed his way. This knowledge raises a red flag, suggesting that Diddy may have had an inside source, possibly someone with ties to Suji Knight's inner circle. And who better to fit that role than Keith D, the man of the hour with his reputed gang connections? One of the most enduring enigmas surrounding two Tupac's murder is the whereabouts of the murder weapon itself. While the police managed to recover bullets and casings from the crime scene, the actual Glock gun used in the shooting has remained as elusive as a ghost in the night. Conflicting reports and rumors have swirled around the status of this elusive weapon. In 1998, a 40 caliber gun was shockingly discovered in the garden of a Compton residence, sparking speculation that it could be the murder weapon. However, ballistic tests on this firearm promptly ruled it out as a potential match. Detectives meticulously compared the casings found at the crime scene to the markings that the gun would have left on fired bullets, and the results were a resounding no match. In a bombshell revelation featured in the documentary, Who Tupac? Keith D dropped a truth bomb that sent shockwaves through the airwaves. He claimed that the actual murder weapon mysteriously vanished on the night of the murder itself. Detective Kading himself underscored that without the murder weapon, any connections made between the discovered bullets and the murder could be considered circumstantial at best. In essence, the enigmatic disappearance of the murder weapon has thrown a massive spanner in the works, severely hampering the progress of the investigation and making it an uphill battle to establish concrete evidence. But here's where the plot thickens even further, folks. In a jaw-dropping revelation, former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson appears to assert that he possesses concrete evidence linking none other than Diddy to Tupac's death. In a candid interview with DJ Vlad, Mike Tyson made a heartfelt confession, admitting that he bears partial responsibility for the tragic loss of the iconic rapper. This unexpected disclosure has left the world stunned and reignited interest in the mysteries surrounding Tupac's death. From prison and explain that Tupac was at the Indiana Black Expo wanted to meet me, and that's the first day I met him. The admission not only sheds new light on the circumstances surrounding Tupac's death, but also unveils the intricacies of the interconnected lives of these two influential figures. The friendship between a boxer and an activist may have seemed unusual, but it was truly genuine. It all began when Iron Mike was already a star, while Tupac was still trying to make a name for himself. Their paths crossed in a nightclub where the aspiring rapper amazed the baddest man on the planet with his incredible singing talent. 
Moreover, the charismatic singer's passion for boxing brought them even closer. This shared interest in the sport is what led them to start hanging out together and cultivate an unbreakable bond of friendship. Anyway, in a recent Drink Champs interview with DJ EFN and Noor, released on Sunday, June 11th, Iron Mike opened up about his 1992 prison stint, sharing a mind-blowing interaction with the legendary West Coast artist that caused an uproar during his visit. While at an after-party at the Palladium on Sunset in California, Mike instructed security to allow a group of young men to enter through the back of the venue, and one of those men turned out to be Tupac. Once he came into the visiting room, and there was all these hillbilly hicks, mean Aryan guys. As soon as he came up, everybody started clapping, Tyson said. They respected him. Soon as he came in the room, they started applauding. Before, Mike Tyson had shared this story with DJ Wu Kid, along with former NBA players Matt Barnes and Stack Jackson, during an episode of his Hot Boxing podcast. This was after the New York DJ had pointed out the incredibly rare artwork Tyson possesses, depicting two packs compelling Machiavelli album cover artwork. The guards are saying that Hey, stop! Sit down! He was Wu. He was a force, Tyson told Barnes, Jackson, and Wu Kid of the encounter. If he loved you, it was all love. But if he didn't like you, he looked for beef sometimes. He wanted you to know he was there. He continued, everywhere I go, out in Africa and Europe, people ask, what was Tupac like? How was Tupac everywhere all over the world? This is what he wanted. He wanted to be immortal. During his Drink Champs interview, Mike Tyson elaborated on how the meeting came about, sharing that he had only met the Hit'em Up lyricist six months before his 1992 imprisonment. Tyson also revealed that it wasn't Tupac who reached out and made the initial contact prior to the rapper's visit. Everywhere I go, out of like in Africa, Europe, how was Tupac? What was Tupac like? Right. Right. Throughout the course of the interview, Tyson goes on to speak at length about the visit and also name-dropped several other A-list celebrities who visited him, including Whitney Houston and more. I had everybody, B.B. King, James Brown, Whitney Houston, Florence Henderson, everybody came, he said. I can't even name them all. Just so many people came to visit me. During the interview with DJ Vlad, he further recalled the time when he forced Tupac to come and see him fighting. On September 7, 1996, Tupac attended Mike Tyson's match against Bruce Seldon at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Tyson wanted him there, but looking back, the boxer believes that Tupac might still be alive if he hadn't pressured him to attend the match. He even elaborated that Tupac wanted him to go to 622, but he insisted him to come to Las Vegas. I know who I am, I know what my element's about, he continued. This is just what happens in my world. That was part of my world. Just because it was Tupac and I was attached to it, it was different. Nas, who had a brief feud with the rapper, also had plans to meet the Dear Mama lyricist in Vegas as they'd begun to put an end to their beef just a few days earlier. We both knew we were supposed to continue that conversation and probably just squash the whole thing. I was scheduled to meet him in Vegas, the Queen's rapper previously revealed. After some days of that fight, it was reported that Tupac had been found dead. Yes, I remember that fight because I remember talking to Tupac making sure that he would have the tape because I was coming out at, out of his um, with his music. Yeah. And I was calling make, make it on time. As Tyson was coming out of his music, he decided to meet Tupac on his own. Unfortunately, the meeting could not be made possible as Tupac died that day. I was at my house. I just had a brand new baby girl. I couldn't believe it. I told him I am coming to see you. I get dressed, then I had to go. I had to see my daughter and somebody told me he had got shot, and the next morning they had released that he had died. To this day, Tyson carries the weight of regret, haunted by the thought that if only he had arrived a few minutes earlier, he might have been able to help Tupac and prevent his tragic death. The pain of not being able to protect his friend and witnessing the aftermath of that fateful night still lingers in his heart. This is what happens in my world. That was part of my world. My world, this happens. But just because it was Tupac and I was attached to it, it was different. It's a burden he carries with him, wishing he could turn back time and alter the course of events. The memories of their friendship and the bond they shared serve as a constant reminder of what could have been and the profound impact Tupac's loss had on his life. I expect somebody to die after a fight or somebody get hurt or something crazy happened. But when it happened to him, it was, it was different. On September 13, 1996, the world lost the iconic musician after a brave battle for his life. His untimely death left a void in the hearts of countless fans, and the mystery surrounding his murder remains unresolved, adding to the enduring pain of his loss. 
Their bond went beyond the surface, as both endured hardships. During Mike's time behind bars, Tupac visited him in jail, a testament to the depth of their friendship. This meaningful gesture speaks volumes about the genuine connection they shared. In any case, Tupac's legacy as a brilliant artist and voice for the marginalized continues to shine brightly, but the unanswered questions serve as a constant reminder of the injustice and sorrow that marked his departure. However, Tyson gave a warning to the assassin of his friend. I'm past my f you prime. I don't have no trouble now, do I? <laughs> do I get in trouble anymore? You don't see nobody write anything about me no more, right, do you? Right, right. Things have changed. But when I'm young out there and I'm strapped. According to some insiders, there was one person who was with Tupac at the time of death, and that was Diddy. During several interviews, Tyson has pointed fingers toward Diddy many times. Patrick Bet David, the host of a podcast, Valuetainment, asked about the intricacies of the death behind Tupac Shakur. No, I just knew him for a long time, said Mike Tyson after being questioned on his closeness with P. Diddy. Awesome guy. I knew him before he was Diddy, when I first became champ. He used to have my crates at my after parties and stuff, said Tyson. Mike Tyson reflected on his childhood memories, recalling how he found it astonishing to think about leaving negative influences behind and never encountering them again at his lowest points. He said, I remember when I was 11, 12 years old. It baffles me to think you just got away from these people. You'll never see them again at the worst of your level. You're not the only one God had his hands on. These guys were made successful too. You're almost like proud in a way. According to certain reports, there are suggestions of Diddy being somehow connected to Tupac's murder. The focus on this matter intensified when Biggie's murder case was reopened at the request of his mother in 2006. During this process, LAPD detective Greg Carding came across new information that seemed to link Diddy to the Tupac. He was known as the multi-law enforcement task force that investigated the murders of rap stars Tupac and Biggie. That's the Wikipedia story about him, right? So I said, so who was really behind this? Valletta Wallace, the mother of Biggie Smalls, filed a lawsuit against the LAPD, seeking around $500 million, citing the widely known conspiracy theory that the police had concealed her son's death. As a result of this lawsuit, the case was reopened in 2006 and assigned to LAPD detective Greg Carding. During his investigation, Carding stumbled upon more information than he had anticipated. If you've seen the movie American Gangster and they got these pictures, is this the guy at the top? Is this the guy? Mm -hmm. So I have 50 50 different pictures with magnets and he's putting these things up on if you go to the video you'll see how I set it up detective Greg Carding made a significant revelation during his investigation after an intensive three-year investigation detective Greg Carding reached a startling conclusion Sean Puff Daddy Combs allegedly ordered a one million dollars hit on Tupac Shakur the motive was believed to be linked to the heated rap feud involving himself and Biggie Smalls Carding asserted that the music mogul had significant gang connections in Los Angeles and enlisted the services of Crips member Keffy D to to carry out the assassination. Got to retaliate so they don't look like, you know, a weak gang. And two, you know, they owe it to him. According to Carding, Tupac's murder was orchestrated by Crips gang member Orlando Baby Lane Anderson. Initially, Keffy D was intended to carry out the hit, but a last minute change of plans resulted in Kef's nephew performing the assassination. You know, the Southside Crips and Orlando Anderson, Keffy D, they know that, hey, we just hit this dude. and in Las Vegas and, you know, it's, it's on. This led to the tragic death of Tupac and the injury of Suge Knight. Interestingly, hours before the shooting, Baby Lane had a physical altercation with Tupac at a Vegas casino. Surprisingly, there are claims that Biggie Small's former wife, Faith Evans, was aware of Diddy's alleged plot to Tupac. Following the murder of Tupac, Keffy D reportedly reached out to Diddy and Evans to inform them of their involvement in the tragic event. And it's Puffy on the other end of the line, hands the phone to Keffy D, and Keffy D, I'm sorry, Puffy asked him, man, was that us? Was it, you know, just in light of this new evidence, Detective Carding called for the case to be re-examined and for Diddy to be held accountable for his alleged involvement in Tupac's murder. He expressed his frustration that justice had yet to be served for these two iconic rappers and their families. In a surprising turn of events, Keffy D's public confession during the documentary Death Row Chronicles seemed to corroborate Detective Carding's theory. Keffy D admitted that he was in the vehicle with his nephew Orlando Anderson on the night of Tupac's murder. He also revealed that his nephew, who was seated in the back seat of the car, was the one who pulled the trigger. These revelations have ignited renewed interest in the long-standing murder cases of Tupac Shakur and the notorious Big. 
Could this evidence be the key to finally uncovering the truth behind their tragic deaths? The plot continues to thicken in this labyrinthine saga, as questions abound and theories swirl about the events leading up to the murders of two of hip-hop's most iconic figures. While the mysteries surrounding these cases persist, the families and fans of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls continue to seek closure and justice for their untimely deaths. It remains to be seen how these revelations will impact the ongoing investigations and whether they will finally bring those responsible for these tragic murders to justice. One thing is for certain, the legacy of Tupac Shakur will continue to live on in the hearts and minds of their fans, and the music industry will forever bear the scars of their untimely departures. And that's it for his video folks, bye!